Isaiah chapter 31, Obadiah, the 31st book of the Bible. Woe to them that go down to Egypt for help. Now the chapter is about Judah. But Egypt has always been a type of the world. And for the Christian, we're not to run to the world for the help. We're not to use the world's way of evangelism. We're not to use the world's way of promoting the church. We're not to have the world's way of uh, populating the church. We're not to be doing the world's way of anything. We have strict Christian standards given to us by the Bible. And the lads are seeing church ages, throw it all out the window and do what I like and misplease God and be lukewarm and just make God sick. Well, you know what's going to happen to Judah? In the book of Jeremiah, they're going to get slammed by Babylon. You know what's going to happen to the church? The Christians are going to get slammed at the judgment seat of Christ. And for all eternity, they're not going to have crowns. Plain and simple. So God has warned Israel and Judah. I mean, it's in the law. Don't go to don't go to Egypt for horses. Don't go to Egypt for uh, for fame or wealth. Don't go to Egypt. And here it is again. Woe unto them that go down to Egypt in the time of Jeremiah. You know, they Jeremiah. What's the word of the Lord? And the word of the Lord says, "Stay here." And they kidnap Jeremiah and Baruch and they run to Egypt. After the Babylon captivity, after the Babylonians have come and the city has been destroyed. The world is not to run to the world. I mean, the church is not to run to the world. And yet it does. And we read the other night and we studied the other night. We're to go to God first. There's nothing wrong with going to a doctor. I've got a thing with my foot. I'm actively praying to the Lord about it, and I'm going to call the doctor tomorrow, get an appointment. I'm going to seek the Lord. I'm not going to say, well, I'm not ever going to go see a doctor. And stay on horses. Well, that's forbidden in the law for the Jew. And trust in chariots, military. We got the greatest military. We got the strongest military. No. You're eliminating God. And you have nothing. You realize Babylon had the strongest city, the strongest uh, uh, army and all that, and the, and the army came under the, under the walls. Now, I don't know how strong Jericho was as a military fate, but the walls came down. Joshua came up against mighty nations. And the victor of God gave the victory to the children of Israel. Because there are many. Whoopie doo, there are a lot. And horsemen, because they are very strong. Look what God says about the Egyptian army. They're strong and they're many. Don't rely on them. But they look not unto the Holy One of Israel, God. Neither seek ye the Lord. We don't go to they don't go to God, they don't seek after. I mean, we're a nation, we're one nation under God. In God we trust, and God's the last, the very last, and even amongst the churches to turn to. You know, the last time that this nation turned to God in prayer was was the week of 9-11. And that fizzled out very quick. You know when that fizzled out when we turned away from God? Now, I remember, nine, I forget what day of the week it was, but I remember during the week we had, the church I was attending, we had a special night, and if you could come, I mean, you understand, it wasn't typical Wednesday night, I mean, if you had to work, understand, but if you could be there, we had a special prayer night, and and I mean, some couldn't make it, because I mean, they, they had planned on coming to church, you know, working all that, that's understandable. But do you know when we left God after 9-11, when the President Bush said, all right, let's have a national prayer. When we began to say that Islam is not an enemy. When we try to water down Allah. That's when God left. 
And God has been kicked out of the public schools, and yet there are prayer mats facing Mecca in the public schools that I am told by parents who have children in the public school system today. Or, you know, had them before this COVID-19. I have been told by parents you know, that they would get in yoga positions and the yin-yang in classrooms. And that they would, and listen, even when I went to school, grammar school, I remember we would meditate. We would have a moment of silence. And man, listen, it's been many years since I went to grade school. I, grade, I graduated in 1987 from high school, so figure back. And you know what God did? All right, you put Allah in the schools, you put the popes in the school, you took Jesus Christ out of the school, you took prayer out of the school, you took the Bible out of the school. Now you're not in school at all. Why? Because you run to Egypt and you run to the gods. Egypt has many gods. We saw that in Exodus. But there's one God, and he's the very, very last. Today is February 8th. 2021. How many Christians forsook the Lord God on uh, February 7th, 2021? You say, well, what was that? The Super Bowl. You know, I've known of good churches in the past, good churches, and it was completely a surprise to me that I learned that some of them churches went and rented television screens so they could have a Super Bowl party in their church. And I was quite, and one of the churches I know, he was a good preacher. He was a good teacher. You know where he is now today? He's retired. And you know where churches are today? They're closed. They say, oh, Super Bowl, we'll bring them in. So I said, okay, I'm out. Revelation chapter 3. All are welcome. Okay, close the doors. Revelation 3. They're going to the Egypt gods. They're going to the worldly gods. They're not going to God. It's going to get worse. Yet, he, God, also is wise. <laughs> and will bring evil. The concept, not never sin. God never, can God not do anything? God cannot sin. I like my watermelons now. I exchange them for apples. God cannot sin. That's, that evil is not sin. That evil is the consequence of sin. You know what brought COVID-19? The sin of the world. You know what brought all these hurricanes out of season to Florida and Texas? The wickedness and sin of America. You know, it's bringing diseases and droughts and, and, and famines and floods and all kinds of phenomena. It's not El Nemo, it's El Gato. Because a mano and his sino and no repento. That even last month in Daytona Beach, Florida, they say the, the world's greatest beach. I didn't even know it was a beach. I myself and the Daytona Police Department and the city representatives of Daytona Beach on the phone with, with a respectable lawyer for, for public ministries and the right of the Supreme Court said, if that man continues to preach on the sidewalk, we're going to arrest him. Uh, lawyer, I don't care what you say. I have been given the orders. If he continues to preach, we're going to arrest him on a city sidewalk. And let me tell you right now, it's been over a month and they were in the wrong and I was in the right. That kind of reaction from the government is not going to get you appeased by God. There's consequences coming. I will not call back his words. <laughs> Isaiah says, I don't, I'm going to preach what God tells me to preach. I don't care what you have to say about it. But will rise against the house of the evildoers. God is your enemy if you're an evildoer. Whether you're a child of God or you're an enemy of God. Whether you're Judah or you're Gentile. Whether you're Israel or Gentile. Whether you're a Christian or not a Christian. If you're an evildoer, God is against you. 
Don't think because, oh, I'm under the blood of Jesus Christ, I'm saved. I, you know, no, you're just as worried. Does not the judgment begin at the house of God first? And now, that house of God, of course, is not the church house. You know, that's like the Catholic church over there. You know, Peter visited Babylon, That you know, that's Rome. And what about Babylon over, over Revelation? Well, that's not us. <laughs> yeah. And against the help of them that work iniquity. Who's the help? Egypt. What about the Christian? What would be the help like that? Oh, yeah, we'll give you a loan for your building. And then, you know, and your building project and your Christianity and your church and all that. And you're just wicked. And you're just vile. You just do everything against the Bible. God said, I'll go after that bank, too. For giving you money so you can sin. Maybe so far back, if you put money in that plate of that church, these mega churches, you support the mega churches. They're doing iniquity. The help of them that work iniquity. Man, you support the, the, these 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 wicked mega churches with rock. I, I I've been seeing some video rock and roll, and rap music. I saw a video the other day of one of these Mark. It's all rap music and up there funky dancing dancing. There was no preaching. And anybody that sport supports that work of iniquity, God said, I'm against you. Even if you're saved, you better be careful what you put the Lord. You know, they say it's the Lord's money. You better be careful where you put the Lord's money. Because if you put the Lord's money into the devil's work, God ain't gonna bless you. Come on, let's think about it like this. All right, the work of iniquity. You're a husband, and Paul says that, listen, you're to take care of your wife. And instead of $20 for a missionary that week, if your wife wants to go out, you take that $20 and, and you take her out there. You think God's going to bless that? Yes. You think God will bless? I mean, maybe you go off on a weekend. You just go off to be husband and wife and, you know, wherever. Think God's going to bless that? Yes. Husband, love your wives. Now, let's take a man. He goes out and buys a prostitute. Saved or law? Uh, married or not married? <laughs> he's a, a Christian goes out there saved. Whether he's married or not married, he goes out and buys a prostitute. You think God's going to bless that? Well, what's the difference putting the money into a, to his wife, which is proper, or putting his money to a prostitute, which is not proper? Oh, that's not the kind of preaching of money that many of the churches want. I'm not for money. Now, the Egyptians, now this is the world. This is God speaking to Isaiah, to Jude. The Egyptians are men. God is God. And not God. There's a big difference. Donald Trump is a man and God is God. I'll put my trust in God, not Donald Trump. God is God. I'll put my trust in God rather than a pastor of church. Whoa. Yes. Because I don't need to check God out. But any man is going to get any behind any pulpit. I'm going to check him out. Some people treat the, the, the preacher and all that like God. I'm a Silas. Well, I'm a Paul. Wait a minute. What about God? Oh, yeah, him too. And their horse is flesh. And not spirit. We live in a realm. Take your Bible to 2 Kings 2. 2 Kings 2. I'm going to show you something. You know, if the Lord would open our eyeballs, we, they would be blown out. 2 Kings chapter 2. I'm going to show you two places. 2 Kings 2. I don't know. Uh, verse 11. And it came to pass as they still went on, Elijah and Elijah, and talked, 
that behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder and Elijah went up and the world went into heaven. Well, there's some spiritual horses there. Well, you see, well, Brother Stiley, you know what? That was his Elijah and Elijah. Really? Chapter 6, verse 17. Verily, verily. Verily, verily. Chapter 6, same book, 2 Kings, verse 17. And Elijah prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, mountains full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elijah. There's a lot of things going on that we don't see. <laughs> There's spiritual horses out there. I mean, New Age, I mean, the New Age movie can worship spiritual horses and, and unicorns and all that. Why can't the Bible? Wouldn't it be interesting when, when the church comes back behind Jesus Christ if all our horses are spiritual and not real? I've heard people say, well, you know, there's animals in heaven because we're coming back on horses. What if they're spiritual? But we just saw two places. Number three, in Isaiah. God tells Isaiah, hey, there's horses of flesh and then there's horses spiritual. Maybe those horses we come back in, in, in Revelation chapter, maybe they're 19. Uh, maybe they're 19. I don't, I don't know how old they'll be, but maybe they're spiritual horses. I don't Scripture with scripture. You don't have to believe that one. You're not gonna to go to hell if you don't believe in this, you know, the spiritual or the flesh horses of Revelation 19, but be something to think about. When the Lord shall stretch out his hand, both he that helpeth shall fall, and he that hoping shall fall down. So here Judah. Is going to fall because of their sins, and those that help Judah are going to fall in their sins. And for a Christian, a Christian that has sinned against God is going to fall, and everybody that helps that Christian is going to fall. You better be careful what church you're in. You better be careful where you put your money in the plate. <coughs> you better be careful what missionaries you support. I've had plenty of missionaries I supported, and I learned something. Oh, no, not getting my support no more. We had a church one time, fill shoe boxes. Well, okay, we supported them. And it came time, to fill, all right, we filled ours with gospel tracks and color, you know, crayons and stuff like that. We put gospel. Oh, no, no, you can't have the gospel tracks in there. Well, we took our shoe boxes, took them all apart, and said, well, we ain't going to give no more money to that, and we ain't going to have nothing to do with that no more. I'm not going to support a work that doesn't support the gospel. I have been in churches where I stopped giving to the church because of the, the things they were doing with the money. And I, I put it off to the missionaries. All shall fall, fail together. What? You don't think you're going to be judged by helping an evildoer? What? You don't think you're going to be judged by being an evildoer? That's why I don't vote. Last, well, I voted the first time for Obama to be out of office. That's the last official time I voted. Only to keep Obama out of office. But the last official time I really wanted to vote... It was one of the Bush's presidency. It was after Desert Storm. I voted for him before, and we had that perfect storm, and we had where he was going to move the embassy to Jerusalem, and he, he backed down. I mean, the guy is safe. And we got that perfect we got that perfect storm because we interfered with Israel for good. I said, you know what? I put that man in office. So my vote was cast for him, and we did evil to Israel. That's my fault. I'm not going to get involved in voting no more because I don't know what they're going to do with Israel. I don't know what they're going to do. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll just preach the gospel, and I'll let the government be put in the hands of God and the devil. I'm safe. 
I mean, do you realize we can't have that man? That man's divorced. Donald Trump's been, been divorced three times, bankrupt six times. You wouldn't allow him in your congregation, your church, but you allow him and, and promote him to be the president of the United States. Brain. For thus has the Lord spoken unto me. Isaiah said, this is what God said to me. I got something in my eye, so I keep letting me see him rubbing my eye. Like as a lion and a young lion roaring on his prey. When the multitude of shepherds is called forward against him, the lion. All right, there's a lion out there. And the shepherds get together. Hey, there's a lion. Come on, help me. He, the lion, will not be afraid of their voices. Get out of here. Shoot, shoot. Get out of here. Come on, lion. Go. Arr! He will not be afraid of their voices, nor abase himself for the noise of them. What do you guys think you are? This lion is saying to the chef, all right, you'll be breakfast, you'll be lunch, you'll be dinner, you'll be <laughs> dessert. What are you going to say? What are you going to do when God's against you? In God we trust. <laughs> I ain't for you guys. One nation under God. Which God? Take a pick. So shall the Lord of hosts come down to fight for Mount Zion. God is like himself to a lion coming down. Gee, I wonder what that reference is. It ain't the adversary the line, it's the line of the tribe of Judah. That's second advent. That's after he's beaten and chastised the behind of the Israelites. Jacob's trouble is come here, Israel. Get over my knee. Switch. You killed my son. You killed God. And you persecuted Christians. You defiled the word of God. And the devil and the antichrist and the false prophet are thy rod and staff, the correction, the chastisement. They shall come for you. Because when, when God and Jesus Christ comes back, whoa, they're going to want him that time. And for the hill thereof, and Mount Zion is on the hill, a mountain. As the birds flying, so will the Lord of hosts defend Jerusalem. You ever see you see birds fly? Well, guess who's gonna be coming back? Jesus Christ. How's he coming back? He's gonna be like flying through the air. There ain't no road or path those horses are gonna walk. They're It'd be funny if they were the, the Pegasus kind of horses. I mean, the Romans can have a horse on wings. Why can't the Bible? It just says horse. It doesn't even give the description. Defending. That's the first time that word shows up. Defending. 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 What's going on here? Why isn't Jesus? Why ain't he attacking? He ain't attacking at all. The nation of Israel at the seven years is in deep, dire states against the Antichrist, against the world. Jesus Christ mounts up on a horse. Okay, I gotta go protect God's bride. Jesus Christ ain't attacking. He's defending his people. It's the people that's bringing on the war, not Jesus. And you got 66 books to tell you, but you don't want to have anything to do. There's a famine of the word of God. Jesus comes back defending anger. Those are my people. 
I guarantee when Jesus told Saul why he persecuted against him, you persecuted me. I guarantee Jesus, you know, Paul, you just persecuted me. You know, your lovely, dubby, gopy, copy, sloppy preachers today. I bet you Jesus was a man. Why persecute out me, Paul? Stephen? Paul was brought down to the ground. Paul repented. <laughs> He will deliver it from who? The Antichrist in the world. And passing over, he will preserve it. And keep it up. Keep it good. Turn ye unto him. Repent, get right to, to God, Jesus Christ. For whom the children of Israel have deeply revolted. What's that deeply revolted? Tribulation, church age. In the gospel age, and in the times of period where he's been revolting <clears throat> throughout their whole entire history, even in the wilderness, Israel has revolted against God. For in that day, pay attention, every man shall cast away his idols of silver, his idols of gold, which your hands have made unto you for sin. There, there's your aids to work. Other places said they're going to throw it to the moles and to the bats. When Jesus Christ comes back, the idolaters are going to be, we're guilty. <laughs> Get rid of it. Then shall the Assyrian fall. There's the Antichrist. With the sword. The sword that comes out of his mouth. Not of a mighty man. And the sword, not of a mean man, common, lord, or just ordinary rank, shall devour him. But he shall flee from the sword, his young men shall be discomforted. He shall pass over to his stronghold for fear. <laughs> and the princes shall be afraid of the ensign. You know, that's a picture, that's a picture of Saul's army, King Saul. Saul is a picture of Antichrist chasing David. You realize every time you saw Saul in, in, in a military conflict, you realize they were all scared. Here comes Goliath. They're running. Other battles, they're afraid. They're running, they're running over the Jordan River. Get me out of here. They're running all over the place. Saith the Lord, whose fire is in Zion and his furnace in Jerusalem. Again, there's going to be that fiery pit down south, but the anger of the Lord. 